Whoa, hey beautiful people, it's Minsko here and this is part four of the design system series that you have all been asking for. All right, so in this video, we are going to be combining things that you've learned in series one, two and three to create a highly dynamic and scalable button system in your design system. So are you ready? Let's dive in. Now, I'm gonna be walking you guys through exactly how to create this, this very scalable design system. So let me just show you a very quick example. So grab a button, right? We'll grab a button over here. And I wanna show you guys how to create things like this, where you can turn the buttons in primary, secondary, size, large, small, and the states are like hovers, right? So I'm gonna show you guys how to do this from scratch. And we are going to be leveraging things that you've learned in episode one, two, and three to create this. So if you haven't watched it, make sure to gently smash that link above to watch those videos. Oh, and before we continue, another disclaimer is that if you do want access to this design system, make sure to check the link in the description. I've also attached a juicy, juicy coupon to help you get 10 bucks off. So feel free to check that out. So without further ado, let's get right into it, guys. So example project, put down a frame, right? Now, what we're gonna do is, we need to do a bit of planning and you might have realized that every video in this series I've told you guys to do planning before you get into designing the design system. So when we think about it, we are going to create quite a few different variations of the buttons that we need to create. So for example, we are going to create a primary button, right? So it's going to be the primary button. So let me just quickly make this a little bit larger and I'll just utilize the actual type scale, uh, type styles that we have already so you can see all this being used in a uh, cool. So we've got the prim we're gonna create the variants of the primary button, right? And we don't wanna go in and start designing the button right away. So watch me understand, process, and then become an absolute pro. So here we go, primary button. Now let's think about it. What type of buttons are we gonna create? There's gonna be a default button, right? Just the default state of the button, right? So let's just quickly make this, um, H5, all right, oh, a little bit bigger so you guys can see. All right, so H4, uh, this one. Cool, so we've got a button over here, a default one, and then what, what else is there? There's gonna be a hover state, right? And then there's potentially going to be an active state, okay? And like every other video in this series, I'm gonna teach you how to fish so you guys can go fishing afterwards, okay? So then you have an active state, okay? And then remember, we are going to be creating a small, medium, and large button, right? So we have to do that planning ahead, right? So we're gonna have a small button, right? And then we're gonna have a medium button, and then we're gonna have a large button. And obviously, you, I don't need to rationalize this, but if you do need me to, well, in UI design, you're not gonna just have one style of buttons. You wanna be able to pull a button onto a, onto a design and just say, I need it small, I need it large, I need it hover, I need a default. So you wanna make sure you plan out the matrix. Now, obviously, this is an example. If you want to go, like I said, in other videos as well, if you want to go extra large, go ahead, do extra large. If you want to do um, a, ghost, a ghost button as well, which we have in our design system, go ahead, add the ghost button as well. This is just to help you guys get started to understand how to think about and how to plan out your design system so you can be an absolute pro. And if you appreciate that, make sure to smash that like button, guys. So let's think about it now. So we've got to first design the very first variation of this primary button. And we're gonna start off with the small one first and for the default state. So let's think about it. What do we need in this small button, right? We need a label. So let's just say button. And obviously we wanna make sure that we're utilizing the type styles that you've learned before in our series. So let's just say this is going to be a, uh, let's say P2, right? So there's gonna be a label in this. And then let's think about it. There might be an icon in there as well. So I'm gonna jump ahead. You guys might not have an icon set attached, but I'm gonna show you guys this so you can plan ahead while you guys start building out your design system. And you might go, okay, cool. And then what else would there be? There will be a background color, right? So how do we define that background color? Well, we can either put it in a frame or use auto layout. So I would normally use auto layout. So I've got it here, shift, I selected the two items hit shift A to turn it into a frame, right? And I might put some padding on the side, so maybe padding on the side. And then from what we've learned, I might grab the primary button, a uh, primary color, sorry. And then we might actually make this a little bit taller, so 40, 40 pixels high. 
and then I might center align this, right? And then we might change the black text to actually white, see? See, that is why you, you need white in your design, uh, your design system, guys. And then we might go eight. All right, so now we have a scalable button, right? Perfect. Now you're probably thinking, hmm, now what happens for hover? So obviously, Command D, and then we'll bring that over to the hover. And for hover, we want to make sure that it's, let's say, darker, right? And then on the active, we want to make it lighter. So we'll pick a lighter color. And if you, if you don't understand this, you have to watch part one, part two, part three before you watch this one because I've already taught you guys how to create all these uh, color styles or the text styles. So if you're jumping in to watch this without context, then it's obviously not gonna you're not gonna understand it. So please make sure to check the link in the description for all the prerequisite videos to help you understand this. Now, obviously, what we want to do is now we want to duplicate all this and for the medium size buttons, right? So we put it down. And we need to make sure that for median, medium, the text is going to be a little bit larger. So let's make sure it's going to be a 18 point, right? So let's push this up. And there we go, right? So it makes it a little bit bigger, right? And then we also maybe want to make the padding a little bit bigger because these buttons are generally a little, a little bit bigger. So we'll go 16. And we might even want to add maybe some t spacing on the top, actually. Whoops. Boom. Right, and then we can go here, 16, 16, whoops. We could add padding actually, or we could just simply extend it. Um, for this example, I'm just gonna extend it, I'm gonna cheat. And then we wanna duplicate this, Command D, and bring it down for large. And for large, maybe with a, for a very bad example sake, we wanna make it a H5, right? Well, H5 is actually pretty small. Let's make it a H3, uh, right? gonna make it these juicy very very juicy All right so h3 semi bold cool there we have it and for some and then we also want to extend the spacing as well so let's just make it 20 guys all right so 20 20 and 20 cool so we're nearly there already we're nearly at the end already so let's just hit uh, option L Right, that will collapse all your layers. Little trick for you guys, and that when I open it up, it's all cleaned up for me. Now it's time to actually do the naming conventions, and this part is a little bit tricky, right? So let's make sure that all the small buttons are grouped together, and let's make sure all the medium ones are grouped together, and then let's make sure the large ones are all grouped together. All right, cool. So what we wanna do is, we wanna do the naming conventions, and you would have learned this in the topography and also the color um, videos as well. So when we are thinking about name conventions, we want to make sure they're named correctly. So on the right hand side, the little toggles, the Boolean settings are defined correctly. So the very first thing we want to do is we want to name it as a button. I would normally capitalize this, but I've already got a button system set up. So I don't want to replace it. And if I use this, it's going to replace what I already have. So I'm just going to use this for an example. So I have a button and then I want to think about, okay, what size is this button, right? Because the first thing I want to do when I look in my assets is I want to type in button and I want to be able to see the button. And then I want to be able to define the size of it. So I want to say that this is the, a small button, right? And then I also want to say that this is the small default button because there's no start, it's, it's not a hover and it's not active either, right? So that's done. And then I can copy, copy that. I can turn this one into hover and then I can turn this one into active, right? So now, when I look into my assets, when I combine all these components together, which I'll show you guys shortly, I'll be able to search for button. That's exactly what I want. And then I can define whether it's a, a small button. And then I can also state whether it is a default style or a hover style or an active style. And then we'll go ahead and we'll make the changes for these as well. So this one would be medium, right? Boom. And then we can change this one to medium. And then this would also be the hover. And then this one would be the button, it would be medium, and then this will also be active, all right? And then over here, we have a large button, right? And it's default. And then we have a large button, that is the hover state. And then we also have a large button, and this is the active state, right? So now we wanna turn these auto layout components into an actual component. So that's Command, Option, K on your keyboard, and you'll see that the icon will change. So let's go ahead and turn all these into components, 
do it. You, and you have to do these one at a time or else it will group them all into a component, right? You highlight all your components and then you hit combine as variants. And this is where the magic happens, guys. Ready? Boom. Explosion. Now you get the dotted line and now you have created all, you combined all these components into one main master component. So here we have a button. Now watch, watch this magic. So we can type in button, look for the lowercase button. So I've got this one, put it down. And now I can set this as a medium button with an active state. Perfect. And because I've already pulled through an icon that is actually a component itself, I can go in and change this to whatever I want. So this could be a check. This could be a chevron. This could be a cloud grain. Oh, it's a little bit broken, but it's okay. Don't cry. Then you can have a sad button, right? So this is exactly how you can start to create a very, very scalable button system in your design system. So hopefully you guys found that extremely useful and I hope that me teaching you how to fish, now you can go ahead and take the learnings that you've made and go fishing. And now you can build out the secondary buttons, the ghost buttons, and all sorts of buttons because we all love a good juicy button. Now make sure if you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comments below. And if you did appreciate this video, make sure to leave me a comment because it really does make my day when I hear from you guys. And before I let you go, if you do want to grab a copy of this design system, make sure to check the link in the description below. I have left you a juicy, juicy coupon to get 10 bucks off. All right, guys, hopefully you found this useful and I will see you in another video very soon. So that is Command K. Boom. No, Option K. So... Oh,